Number 17, letter A. How much heat transfer is necessary to raise the temperature of a 0.2 kilogram piece of ice from negative 20 degrees Celsius to 130 degrees Celsius, including the energy needed for phase changes? All right. So if you can do this problem, basically, uh, any other phase change problem should be fa uh, or uh, heat exchange problem should be fairly straightforward here. All right. There are going to be essentially five points that you want to always take into account. All right. So let me draw like a little continuum here. And you'll think about every problem along this continuum. So I'll put a mark there and a mark here. I'm going to call this solid. This is liquid. And this will be gas. And in between the solid and liquid phase is going to be the uh, heat of uh, fusion. Okay. The latent heat of fusion, they call it LF. All right. And then uh, between the liquid and gas phase is going to be the latent heat of vaporization. Okay. So basically what you have to do, so for water here, we know that the freezing temperature of water is going to be zero degrees Celsius, right? So I'll plug in my little zero degrees Celsius here. I know it boils at 100 degrees Celsius, so I'm going to write 100 degrees Celsius there, right, where it converts from liquid to gas. So now basically this provides you a, a little picture of how to think about now of how to calculate the uh, heat transfer requirements going from one temperature to another, okay? For example, let's we, we are starting at this point roughly. I'm going to call this point now the negative 20 degrees Celsius point. Okay, negative 20, 20 degrees Celsius. And we have to go all the way on over to, we'll call it, eh, let me go past that. It's not to scale, obviously, but that's fine. And we have to go all the way into the gaseous phase, and we're going to end up right around, what is it, 130, right? 100, 130 degrees Celsius. So basically, if you start here, and you end here, there's going to be five different things you're going to have to calculate. Okay, I'll highlight it. This is one, getting from 20, negative 20 to zero degrees Celsius for the solid. The second thing then will be to calculate then the energy needed for the phase change to go from solid to liquid. Then the next stage will be to calculate the energy necessary to go from liquid water at zero degrees Celsius all the way to 100 degrees Celsius. Then you're going to have to calculate the heat energy required to change the phase to go from liquid to gas. And then you're going to have to calculate the energy necessary to take the gas and convert that, or not convert it, but increase its temperature from 100 degrees Celsius all the way to 130 degrees Celsius. Okay, so if you think about this continuum, solid, liquid, gas, you draw your two marks in between the solid and liquid and liquid and gas phase. All right, and then you map out the temperature change, it will tell you how many different calculations you have to make, all right? And the answer will then be just to summate all of it. You add them all together if you gotta to find the total energy, okay? So let's call this part A. I'll call this A, B, C, D, and E. So let's do A. Anytime you're talking about a change in temperature of a state, meaning you're talking about the change in temperature of solid ice going from negative 20 to zero, you're always using this equation. Okay, you're only going to use this equation up here when you're talking about a phase change. All right, so basically, you might see it. We're going to be using this thing three times and uh, this thing twice. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So I'm going to kind of speed through this part now because this is just mechanical. So this is uh, the heat gained by the ice. I'll label it sub I will equal the mass of the ice times the specific heat of the ice multiplied by the change in temperature of that ice. So Q of the ice will then be equal to the mass of the ice, and it's, we're talking about a 20, uh, excuse me, a 0.2 kilogram piece. Now the specific heat of ice. Now please do not use the specific heat of water in here. Okay, you got to find it. You got to find the ice. So this is a, an average value. By the way, guys, these values here might be different than what you might see in your textbook or whatever. I have this number memorized for water, and I think your book might use 4186. But you know, if, if you notice, they're talking about the temperature, I think, of 15 degrees Celsius. I think this is the value of around 25 or so, uh, but I, I could be mistaken on that. However, what I do know for a fact is that the specific heat of an item is not constant, all right, as the, as the temperature of it changes, okay? So, you know, just be aware of that. Anyway, so this is 2090 
then multiplied by the change in temperature. So the, so the final is zero, right? And the initial is negative 20. So zero minus a negative 20. And we calculate. And it should be positive, which it does come out to be positive, okay? So now it's going to be 0.2 multiplied by 2090, then multiplied by 20. So this is 8,360. 8,360. Oops, 8,360 joules, okay? We'll leave that alone. Next, part B, and I'll put it in a... Uh, actually, you know what? Part B, I'll just put it here. Uh, we're going to do the phase change now, the energy required to go from solid to liquid. Okay, so I'm going to use my phase change formula. So we'll call this the heat of uh, fusion, since that's what we're talking about at this point, multiplied by the mass of the item that melts, okay, which is the same as the point two as we used before, uh, then multiplied by the latent heat of fusion, okay? So again, you got to look up that value. So the mass we're talking about is 0.2 again. And the latent heat of fusion, please be careful here. The values are in kilojoules in the tables, most of them. So when you look up your value of 334, that's in kilojoules. 334 kilojoules, okay, per kilogram, whatever. Uh, now the thing is, though, you know, your values over here are in joules, so you got to be careful, all right? I would just convert this right away. So multiply it by 1,000, essentially, to get that into joules. And then just calculate. So 0.2 multiplied by 334 times 10 to the third. And we get about 66,000, 66,800 joules. Okay, great. Now, what am I going to do for part C? Okay, part C now. And I'm going to run out of space. So I'm probably going to just plug in part C uh, down here. I'm going to change the color. Part C, what do you think I would do? I'll write the formula down. So this is now the Q, the heat energy gained of the water, the liquid water, okay, is equal to now the mass of that liquid water multiplied by the specific heat of the liquid water multiplied by the change in temperature of that liquid water. So what's changing now? Well, the mass is staying the same, right? That's still 0.2. So basically, we're just using this formula again. So that's 0.2. But the specific heat of water is not different. Liquid water, that is, from uh, solid ice, okay? It's going to be about 4,184. And then the change in temperature of the liquid water. What's the total range that the liquid water changes its temperature by? Well, from 100, it goes to 100 and it starts at zero. So obviously that's 100 minus zero, okay? So let's calculate that. So it's going to be 0.2 times 4184 times 100. So 83,680 or so. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to erase some of the work because I'm going to run out of space, but that should hopefully be good. So this is now the Q of the liquid water. The, the liquid water gained 83,680 680 joules of energy. Okay, then guess what? Part D now, right? Part D, and I'll put it in a different color again. Part D now deals with the phase change going from liquid to gas, meaning vaporization. So it's going to be the same thing as this. We're just not talking about vapor, uh, fusion. We're talking about vaporization now. So Q sub V is equal to M L sub V, right? The latent heat of vaporization. So all we have to simply do now is calculate the mass. Again, is the same in the problem. It's 0.2 multiplied now by the latent heat of vaporization. And that again has gotten from the table. Uh, what is it? It's about 2256. 2256. And again, that's in kilojoules. So please be careful. You got to convert that into joules. That's what I'm doing right there. And let's calculate. So now it's going to be 0.2 times 2256 times 10 to the third. And we get a bigger number. All right. So now I'm just going to erase the work, plug in the value. So here we have, for vaporization, the heat needed to vaporize this thing is going to be 451,200 joules. Okay, great. And now last but not least, oh man, right, this is nuts. But last but not least, we got part E, all right, and that's now heating up this gas going from zero to 130. So again, we're going to use the Q of now steam, S, is equal to the mass of the steam multiplied by the specific heat of the steam multiplied by the change in temperature of that steam. Oh, so the mass is the same, 0.2. The specific heat of steam now is about 1520. So 1520, the change in temperature, the final of the steam is 130, and the steam initially begins at 100, okay? So now plug it on into the calculator. So 0.2 multiplied by 1520 multiplied by 30, essentially, right? And this is 9120. All right, so let's erase this now. 9120. Okay, so this is equal to 9120. So 9,120 joules. Oh, finally. 
So now, guys, if we had to find the overall right heat energy gained, it's just this plus this plus this plus this plus this. Okay, so let's do that. Let's add them all up. So 8360 plus then 66800 plus then 83680 plus then 451200 plus then 9120. And lo and behold, now we get a total answer. So the, I'll put a Q sub T for total. All right, it's going to be about 619,000 and uh, I'll round there. Okay, so 619,000 joules. That's the total amount of heat gained. All right, it's actually simple, right? It's just long, the problem, but it's actually kind of easy. All right, all you got to do, think you can think of every, every problem, every, um, uh, every heat transfer problem here. When we're talking about heat gained or lost by an item, you can think about this little continuum. Every problem you can throw into this. Whether you're going to do five uh, calculations or not, you know, five steps, that, that totally depends, right? If you started with liquid water at 20, and let's say it was going to be increased to uh, 70, well, notice, if you plug it into your table, you're only doing this little piece. You don't need any anything else, right? So it's just a one-step problem. Hopefully that makes it a little easier. Anyway. All right, so we got our answer. Now... Let's so erase this. Actually, maybe not. Let me just take a look. What is B saying? How much time is required for each stage? <laughs> Assuming a constant 20 kilojoule per second rate of heat transfer. Oh, goodness, I love it when they give us these units. Right, and then we have to do another conversion on top of it. These problems are not hard. They're just long, and there's many steps to them. All right, so that's why you want to take your time. So what is this? It might tell me joule per second. I mean, you'd be right. I can't say you're wrong. Right, but essentially this is like a kilowatt. Okay. Um, I first want to let's first break this down into joule per second. All right. So if I were to break this down into joule, we probably don't have to, but I'm going to do it anyway. All right, since I have joules over here. But if I were to break that down into joule per second, it would be twenty thousand joules, right, per second. Now joule per second, as we've seen in plenty of problems now, joule per second is a watt. So a watt is a joule per second. It's energy transfer per second, energy transfer per time. And now you have to remember, well, what is that? That's power, this is all power. Okay, so as soon as you start hearing about rate of energy transfer, you're thinking about power. And then once you start thinking about power, we're gonna start thinking about this equation, that power is equal to the energy transfer divided by time. Now in this problem, the energy, we can be specific, it's heat energy, right? So I can change that E to now just a Q. All right, I'm gonna change the E to a Q. Q just means heat energy. E just means energy. But the only energy in the problem is heat energy. So, okay. Now in any case, I gotta find the time, okay, for each of these five steps. All right, I'll probably do one of, I'll show you how to do one and then we're just gonna calculate the rest. So basically I gotta solve this for time, okay? So if I solve it for time, it's going to be equal to the heat transfer divided by the power. Now remember, this is, you might be saying, well, what's the power? This is the power, right? This right here, this is joule per second. This is a watt. This is energy rate. This is rate of energy transfer, right? It's a rate because it's per time. So it's the amount of energy transferred per second. That's power. Okay, so I basically have everything I need now, right? The power is going to be constant. So this number is not gonna change for all the calculations. Right, but the amount of heat needed to go from let's say negative 20 to zero and then to change phase and then to go from zero to 100 and then to change phase and then to go from zero to 130 is different. I mean, that was the whole point of this drawn out calculation down here. So that's how the, that's how the calculations will become different for each case. All right, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do the part A and then the only thing that's gonna change are the Q values, okay? All right, so let's plug it in, right? So we're gonna be using uh, the Q value of 81, uh, 8360, 8360, that looks like a G, 8360, divided then by the power, and that's in terms of watts, so 20,000 watts. Now what do we get here? Well, we get 8360 divided by 20,000, small number, 0.418. I mean, that's a really tiny number, 0.418 watts. Oh, excuse me, seconds, what am I talking about? The answer's in seconds there. That is the amount of time it will take to melt this little block of ice, 0.2 kilograms, that's not really significant. 
And uh, if you did input energy that quickly, the ice would melt pretty quickly. All right. Uh, now, in order to do then the calculation for here, all you're simply going to do is take 66,800, 66,800, and then divide it by the 20,000. You're going to do this one, 83,680, divided by then the 20,000. Okay. This number then divided by the 20,000, and then you'll find the time for each. Okay. So I'll leave you guys up to that. I mean, that's just simple plugging it into the calculator. So guys, thank you very much for tuning in. I appreciate it very much. Please remember to help us out and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Take care.